Hi, my name is Thomas Johnson, and I'm the founder and CEO of Get Up and Get Fit Wellness Coaching Concierge. I'm also a C-suite advisor and investor, and you're listening to How May I Serve You, where I'm constantly on the quest to surround myself with the best coaches while learning how to better serve our executive clientele by asking them, How May I Serve You? Today's show is sponsored by Get Up and Get Fit. Get Up and Get Fit will be providing students with textbooks and school supplies in Cambodia in honor of our guest today, as well as our philanthropic mission to impact at least 50,000 people per year. And today's guest is Robert Moment. Robert, how you doing? I'm doing great. I'm glad to be here. I am excited about 2022. This is about happiness and success. Yes, indeed. And that's a great, great start right there. So Robert Moment is a results-driven ICF certified emotional intelligence expert. Ooh. ICF certified executive and peak performance coach who specializes in, in unlocking the potential in C-suite executives through transformational coaching that brings out the best in them in their professional and personal lives for total fulfillment. Robert, welcome. Welcome and thank you for that great introduction. I am honored to be here. I have an attitude of gratitude, but we're gonna give your guests everything they need to be happy and successful this year, I guarantee it. Yes, indeed. So Robert, so Robert, he's a very inspiring, inspiring transformational coach. So when I first jumped on the phone, Robert, I felt so good afterwards. I felt like I was jumping up and down, man. I felt like I wanted to jump up and down. He has so much energy and he's so authentic in his approach. So Robert, I want you to tell us a little bit more about yourself. You know, um, who are you? Where are you from? This stuff. And I was born in Charlottesville, Virginia. And now I currently live in Northern Virginia. I'm about, say, 15 minutes outside of Washington, D.C. I became a corporate dropout, and I wasn't fulfilled. Um, yes, I was making money, making six figures, working for corporate um, Fortune 500 companies. But at the end of the day, I wanted to make a bigger difference. And I graduated into, um, fell into coaching. I was really the get hired expert first. And then all of a sudden I was transitioning to emotional intelligence and executive coaching. And it's about total fulfillment. When Mm. I can help clients achieve total fulfillment to be the best version of themselves in business and in life, I am most happy and I am most fulfilled. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. You know, and, and that's, that's what it's about, right? It's about really going after that total fulfillment because you said something interesting prior to us jumping on this, uh, interview you mentioned that there were a lot of successful people that aren't happy and can you dive further you know they're not they are you know when you're chasing success sometimes people are chasing money they're chasing materialism but at the end of the day they're still not fulfilled that soul is empty they don't have peace of mind and at the end of the day you can have it all you can have happiness and you can have success like i'll give you an example about maybe this is now pre-covid there was a, a high performing executive He was making a lot of money, traveling around the world. One Saturday, he was at home with his wife and his daughter. Mm -hmm. And his daughter wanted to get some ice cream. So he takes his daughter to get some ice cream. And he says to his daughter, what flavor do you want? She said, Daddy, you know. He asked her again. She said, Daddy, you know. He said, I don't know. You tell me. She said twice mommy knows mommy knows see her mother always would take her to get the ice cream Mm. yeah he realized no work-life balance and he was missing a part of his daughter's life she was about five years old Mm. so time is precious that's the most precious gift that we have we can't get it back and he realized when he became a client he wanted work-life balance it wasn't about the money just the money but also he wanted total fulfillment. Mm, That's what I get played in what I do. But also you have executives, yes, they're making the money. But see, if you don't have total fulfillment, something is lacking in your life and you're cheating yourself. And that's when you realize you can have happiness and you can have success. But you really got to realize that you can't just have success without total fulfillment. Okay. So, so Robert, how do you describe total fulfillment? Like, what's your definition of total fulfillment? Because I'm, I'm pretty sure if I ask if I per, ask person A what total fulfillment is, that person might have a different answer compared to person B. So, 
what's your definition of total fulfillment? Total fulfillment is being happy in every area of your life. Mm. Okay. That's it. Not just one part of your life, happiness and happiness and also peace of mind. Mm. Peace Sweet. of mind. Peace of mind. Happiness and peace of mind in every area of your life. That's total fulfillment. Okay. Okay. So, so Robin, I'm glad you mentioned peace of mind because um, it's funny. Last time I was on a podcast interview and somebody asked me, what are my, um, my values? And I mentioned first it's God, then peace of mind, then family. And when I mentioned peace of mind before, before family, the host of the podcast was a, a bit, you know, surprised because he's, he's so used to people saying family and then other things, but my response was without my peace of mind, I can't be my true, my full self. I can't be my, my, my authentic self. I can't get my all, right? So it's God, peace of mind, and then family. And I have the same order. God, allow me to be a light in this world. Mm -hmm. And God, how can I be a blessing to people? And it is three things. Can I be a, a lamp? Can I be a, a lifeboat? Or can I be a ladder? Mm. And what what might be my normal? It could be somebody else's miracle. Yes, we might share the same day, but that doesn't mean we share the same experiences. Different and that's why I love emotional intelligence. It's about empathy. It's coming from your heart. Mm. It's coming from your heart. Be able to look and walk in somebody else's shoes. And really, people want to be understood and listened to first. I like that. I like that. You're, you're absolutely right. So when you work with these executives, right? Um, how how do you approach them? Because a lot of executives, they're so they're so used to being the boss, right? Um, so used to you know wearing wearing the, the, the pants um, and and being the leaders and and pointing and pointing the very pointing towards the various directions. How do you approach uh, an executive that that has a that has an a personal personality type? But at the same time, they know they need your help. How do you approach this individual? Questions. You know, I always say questions lead to answers. Okay. And questions. What are the situations are you avoiding altogether? That could be one. One, what are your challenges? Because we all have challenges. Mm -hmm. There's nobody in this world that doesn't have challenges. And that starts the conversation. What is your biggest challenge? Or what's on your mind right now? Or what are you struggling with? What obstacles? Mm -hmm. And where are you not achieving the desired outcomes that you want to achieve? And that starts the conversation. And a lot of it could be, you know, fear. You know, mm. are you fearing anything? And that opens up a whole entire conversation, Thomas, in terms <laughs> of fear, because fear, it dictates you. You know, how are you going to make decisions? Uh, fear, what did they say? False evidence appearing real? Yes, but people indeed. have fears. And how is that showing up in your life? Whatever you're going through is showing up in your life. And that's what we start the conversation. Yes, indeed. And some and some people have deep, deep suppressed um, fear from the childhood. And when they become adults, it tends to um, pick its ugly, ugly head. So when you ask these questions and you're peeling back the layers, do you find that um, a lot of executives are holding back? because of their childhood traumas or you know are really really still um fighting these these problems oh excellent question i always said this your childhood that's the first institution of learning the first institution of learning and vulnerability is powerful and when they feel like they're in a confidential safe zone that's when they can open up Mm, okay. Because with, in the key word, confidential safe zone, because let them know vulnerability is powerful because then we could be our authentic self. So you just really touched on, yes, a lot of it is childhood. Like here's an example. I had a client did not like to be criticized. Well, it was constructive criticism. Where mm -hmm. did that come from? He said his father always said you never can do anything right. Mm. Well, and this is somebody that's 55 years old. Look how long he has carried that. Wow. And it showed, and the reason how it showed up, he got a huge promotion. And they didn't see it, meaning they didn't see it. The company, oh, he was great when he was working by himself. Mm -hmm. But now all of a sudden, he's leading a team. 
It's a big difference. <laughs> big difference. And we're talking CIO. <laughs> so they needed to invest in him in terms of emotional intelligence. Okay, okay. So um I'm pretty sure you was able to peel back some layers. So and it took a, a while to really get to this this person. Is that correct? Because a person that's 55 years old having to dig deep and really um, revisit some of those uh, childhood traumas, it's tough. It's extremely tough. You know, like for, for instance, like for myself personally, I went through a civil war, right, when I was a little kid. It took me a long time to even share that part of my story. You know, I just became comfortable like quite recently, right? And when I when I came to the states, you know, I was I went through a lot of adversity because I, I had a an accent and I live in um in Bronzeville and kids can be cruel at that age when I'm six six years old, and then going through various adversity and having to having to build that confidence to become the person I am right now, you know, it's sometimes like we don't think about our childhood, but it, it affects everything matters. It definitely affects the way we look at life. It affects our output. But it's either it's up to you to confront your situation and grow from it, right? So you can become a better person. And that's the approach I took. I grew from my situation and I, I was not bitter. I became better instead of being bitter. You know, so it's it's the main thing is it's about mindset, man. It's about mindset. You know, it truly is, Thomas. You cannot heal what you don't reveal. Yes, indeed. And you can't change what you don't confront. Mm. And how this individual was able to change, you do take an emotional intelligence assessment test. Okay. It, it tells the story. It tells the story, and we were able to tell the story, but also we was able to change the narrative. We saw his strengths, but also we saw his weaknesses. And one of his weaknesses was the criticism, trust. But one of the things about assessments it tells the story, but it also tells you where you can focus on them. But then also you can create a blueprint to help that individual turn it around and achieve success, meaning mm. raise that emotional le level intelligence. Got you, got you. So, Robert, what got you interested in this type of coaching, transformational coaching, right? There's so many different types of coaching and coaches out there, but why this specific field of coaching? It truly makes a difference in every area of this person's life in terms of emotional intelligence. Because emotional intelligence is one of the most important skills to have, whether you're a working professional, business leader, entrepreneur, it's essential. It's mm -hmm. about self-awareness, manage your emotions, but also the, the emotions of other people to be able to perceive. It's a critical skill. And I realize this critical skill it can help them not just once again business but also in their personal life and i feel like that's when i'm making a difference yes indeed yes indeed awesome right there so what drives you man you know i, I know you've been the coach for a while now and you've you've worked with so many different type of clientele but what keeps you going on a continuous basis my drive is my why is to reach as many people as i can let okay. my light shine because I'm happy when I'm making a difference. Mm. Those are the gifts, the talents, the skills that God has given me to use. Amen. And if I'm not using those, then I'm not happy. But guess what? He's not able to let my light shine. And people, when they come to me, they come to me because this is my call. This mm. is not something that, okay, I wanted to do because I'm making the, I wanted to make money. This is who I am. I'm wired. This is in my DNA. You can't, nobody can take that away from me but God. Amen, amen, amen. So, so you, so you definitely are going. Um, you're following your calling, you know. And it's, it feels amazing when we're actually in that space where we're doing what we love, what we're good at, and what feels authentic, right? You know, it it doesn't feel like work. It doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> Thomas, I can do this in my sleep, man. When people come to me, I can see things in them. That they don't see it themselves. I can hear that spirit. I can t I, I can read pretty much. I'm not saying read that mind, but I can sense. I said, okay, I know what they need, but I need to see it through an assessment. But when they talk to me, I can hear the hurt, the pain, the struggle. And but I want them to be in such a good place that I can say, my work is done. Mm, mm, my work mm. is done. There you go. There you go. I, I love that. 
Awesome, awesome. So, so Robert, are you currently working on any new projects that, or, or books that you, you could share with us? Yeah, I'm working on a book for executives. Because what I'm realizing, executives, that transition, when they go, they a lot of them fail. The rate, I saw a statistic like 40% fail. And the reason why, they are, they, once again, they suffer in silence. Because they said, okay, now you got the position, but if they don't have a coach, they don't have any guidance. Because a lot of times you can get promoted in a position and you're afraid to go to other people and ask for help because, hey, you got the position, you should know what to do. But a lot of times they need a roadmap and a guidance, and this book will give them a guidance and a roadmap, like a how-to book. And it should be published probably within the next month. Awesome, awesome. Do you mind dropping the title of the book, or is that still hidden until it comes out? Well, I can tell you, yes, Executive Success Habits. Awesome, awesome. All right, all right. I'm I'm looking forward to grabbing a copy of that book, man. I appreciate that. (laughs) So if someone were to inquire about your services or just want to get to know Robert Moment a bit more, where can they find you? They can go to how, no, they can go to highemotionalintelligence.com. Okay, okay. Or they can email me at robert at highemotionalintelligence.com. And they can, you know, I encourage them to take the free um, EQ test. Um, that will kind of give them an idea on where that level of EQ, whether it's high, medium, or low. Awesome, awesome. So, Robert, it's 2022. What new things can we expect from Robert Moment? What are your, your New Year's resolutions, man? Talk to me. Well, one, I will tell you is to continue to have strategic partnerships, but just really make a difference. And, you know, and my theme is believe. I will really? tell the listeners, believe. That, you know, you have your own thing, but mine is believe. Believe I will. Believe I will. Whatever you fill in the blank, but I believe. That's believe. That's the key. That's my awesome. theme is believe. Hey, man, hey, man. And believe, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a word that's so, so powerful because it all everything starts from your mindset, right? So if you can't believe, how do you expect to achieve? Exactly. You know, so that that's a powerful um, word right there. So I'm gonna keep repeating that. You know, you must believe, you must believe, because it's so so important. You know, definitely. So, what advice would you give to other coaches and even other executives to help them get on top of their game? The, the, the key is to, to get on top of your game. First of all, know who you are and what you believe in. And then after you know who you are and what you believe in, the key is to know your value. Mm. And to know your value, communicate that every day and demonstrate it every day. Whether you're an entrepreneur or an executive, communicate and demonstrate your value because you do have value that you bring into the marketplace. Mm. And that's the key, to know your value, communicate it and demonstrate it because you're going to make a difference when you can communicate and demonstrate the value that you bring. And only you know the value that you bring. But we all have value. And don't be ashamed. Let your light shine and that people will see the value. You will attract the people who can see your value. I attract, you attract, Thomas, the people who can see your value. And that's the key. Because the people who can't attract, you don't want to work with those individuals. Or you don't even want to work for a company that can't see your value. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right, man. It's all about it's all about your value. And like I love the fact that you mentioned allow others to see your value because people tend to shy away from your values at times, right? They, they get a bit uh, nervous of when your value is everything. Your value is who you are, you know, what you stand for. If you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for everything, right? So you have to put your value at the, the forefront, you know? And I, I already shared with you what my value, what my values are as, as a man, you know, as, as a person. So that's so, so important right there. So Robert, Thank you for coming on today's episode. Well, thank you. Uh, yes, thank you. I, I love your energy. Your I love your tenacity. Um, but last but not least, how may I serve you? Well, you've already served me to give me this opportunity. And what I want all listeners to do, to start a gratitude journal. At mm. the beginning of the day, morning, three things that you are grateful for. At the end of the night, three things that you are grateful for. A gratitude journal. And that's good. You'll be happy throughout the year if you create a gratitude journal. Yes, indeed. Robert, it's funny you mentioned that because uh, every every day 
upon waking up, I list three things that I'm grateful for, and I smile and I and I feel myself being grateful. So it helps. That definitely helps. It helps to um, carry the tra the trajectory of your day. So it you does. It, it, Thomas, <laughs> you are on point. It does. It does. Three in the morning, and you could be more than three, and in the afternoon, at night, what you are grateful for. That yeah. will, your happiness starts when you have an attitude of gratitude. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. You're absolutely on point. So, Rob, thanks again for coming on board. And I'd like to give thanks to all of our listeners and viewers for lending us their ears and their eyeballs. And make sure to come on for next week's episode. And make sure to take care. Be blessed. And cheers. We're out. Great. Thank you.